joined the budget conversation here on Channel Television Business Morning all this week. You know where to find us on Twitter at Channels TV or at Biz Morning. Uh, of course, of course, you can. And, uh, I, 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 myself, I'm, I'm at B. Bolson. You know where to find me. We always keep this conversation on, on air, off air, all the time. And of course, you can watch the show all over again. You go to our YouTube page, our channel's uh, web. There you find us, youtube.com, uh, if you miss this uh, at any point in time. But again, uh, let, let's get into the, uh, the energy market. Quite a bit of some news there this morning, and we're going to rope all this together into the budget. They, they all go uh, together. The direct power purchase uh, uh, arrangement that was announced last May by the uh, Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Batunde Fashola, now the electricity regulatory agency called the NERC, has put some uh, pen to paper and came up with a document that was has now been presented to the power minister. This will guide the process through which our companies, or some end users, some eligible uh, end users, big companies, big institutions like channels, television, for example, can buy power directly from the Jenkos without necessarily going through uh, the discus, which are the primary end dis uh, power distributors. Now, this was first uh, muted in May. The discos kicked against it. There are a lot of kicking against uh, around. You got to look for something to kick. But again, this time around, it's now becoming uh, legal, as it were, operationally from the transition, uh, transition market point of view. So uh, the new uh, law uh, is now uh, will specify a number of things. Who is eligible? Uh, and what are the uh, criteria to be met before you qualify to buy power directly from uh, the Jenkos, that's the power generating companies. In the meantime, this also make arrangement, however, for the discos, uh, designated them as supplier of last resort in case any of the Jenkos are unable to meet uh, the new trading arrangement from a prospective buyer. You're interested? Checking the new laws, checking with the NERC, and you'll find out. In the meantime, the National Bureau of Statistics, that's our statistics office, released the third quarter of power generation uh, data early this morning. And what we have was a total average of 82,266 megawatt hours of electricity generated by 23 power stations across Nigeria uh, in third quarter. The month of September seemed to be uh, the sweetest point uh, within the quarter. A peak generation of 91,801 uh, megawatts of uh, electricity was uh, achieved on September the 1st. And the highest power generating plant in Nigeria was at Egbi. And that, the output was uh, 10,611 uh, megawatts. So you, you see some of those things uh, uh, later on as... Uh, what we would call them infographics by the statistics uh, office. But let's, let, let's get on to uh, the, the further the commodities market uh, conversation with Ada Konobi, who is one of the economists and research analysts at Financial Derivatives Company. Good morning. Good morning. Bozo. It's good to have you. The budget is the big story today, uh, isn't it? Yes, it is. And I'm sure everyone is watching. Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, what's your thoughts? What, what are your thoughts at FDC uh, regarding... Uh, this budget proposal? Well, we know the um, president is going to meet with the National Assembly later today at 2 p.m. to discuss the uh, medium term economic framework. Mm. And the budget assumptions say we say all constants remain the same. We expect exchange rate at um, the exchange rate for the budget assumption is at a 305. Uh, price is about $45 per barrel. Oil price is at $45 per barrel for the budget assumption. And then um, production is at 2.2 uh, million barrels per day. So this is what we're working with, or this is what we expect them to work with. Um, however, we see um, at the global front, which I'm trying to link the um, oil price um, assumption to what is going on in the global market now, oil prices are as high as $64 per barrel. This is a two and a half year high, as some would say. And so now, I mean, there's a lot of room, and this we haven't had this much room in, in, in terms of the um, spot price and uh, um, budget absorption price is about 20% or about 45% actually increase in prices. So, um, so that's good news in, in for us if oil prices continues uh, its, its bullish trend. It's good, it's good news for us, but again, 6421 is good. 
Uh, you folks think that 45 should be the uh, assumption? Well, the well, based on um, what we believe that the president or the um, team are going to com come up with, it's still $45 per bar. But what is the possibility of them adjusting prices? I think it would be too quick for them to do that because this is just, uh, it may just be a bubble in the oil market. And some expect that prices will crash again because it's not really sustained. So what is just driving the bullish run in the oil market is the ge geopolitical tension, specifically in the Middle East, in Yemen, Iraq, Iran, Lebanon, and Saudi Arabia. So that is why we're seeing oil prices go up. But then on the downside, this means that there may be some sort of um, discord amongst OPEC members, say they meet in November and they meet in January, so everyone may not be on the same page, and there's a probability that everyone may begin to produce as much oil as they want to, and prices may come down again, so this is what we have to actually monitor to know, to know well, how to We've a lot of geopolitical issues yes. uh, happening in the Middle East uh, to, to warrant uh, becoming a burning uh, economic issue. This morning, there were, there, were, there were news around whether Lebanon and Saudi Arabia is getting into some <laughs> political spot, whatever, again, and you have the, the Yemen issue, you have the Syria, you have ISIS, you've got the, the, the problem with... Um, um, uh, 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 Qatar uh, that's still uh, hanging in there, the diplomatic broha uh, 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 that between Saudi Arabia, led by Saudi Arabia and five, a few, about five or seven other countries in the region. Looks like a very troubled pre uh, place. Uh, but again, if you uh, come back home, the prices are good. But do you think, we're not sure what the executive will do or what the president will say, uh, but I would if we go by the last three budgets uh, by the executive, in terms of the um, uh, suggestions mm -hmm. in the budget, they seem to be a little bit more dovish. Yes. When it gets to the legislature, those folks are hawkish. Yes. So, do you see, is it likely this will play out again? If it does, uh, yes. what do you think the, uh, do you think the legislators will think, this is a sweet oil prizes, let's have some sweetener. Well, if you compare the budget um, for 2018 to 2017, we see there's a little bit of, there's a marginal increase in the oil price pro um, projection because most of them